Good morning and welcome to another episode of Smashy Sports Podcast Show. I am Hisham, today joined by Cairo. How you doing, Hisham? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. It's a Monday. I'm glad to be back in the office. We missed you on Friday. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just had some places to be, but yeah, the the weather's getting nicer mm -hmm. and I feel like the week's going to start strong this week. Let's enjoy ourselves. We had, there was a very strong weekend. We had uh, for the Saudi League. Mm. Very, very strong news we have. Um, you can always find the video on Smashy TV. Uh, all the vertical cuts are across our social media platforms. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and YouTube Shorts. Also, you can listen to the podcast on your favorite platform, and Remy, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. Nice. Uh, before we start, um, the UAE Basketball uh, Federation has announced to postpone the Vice President Cup. Yeah. Uh, it should kick off last Sunday. Uh, but they still haven't announced when the tournament will be starting. Uh, but we have the league uh, starting on the 10th of October. Uh, you can watch it on Smashy Sports, uh, on Smashy TV in general, and Smashy Sports. You also, uh, to know like the results, schedules, fixtures, also visit our Instagram page and Facebook and Twitter. Uh, first game will be versus Shabab Al Ahli and Al Jazeera and Shabab Al Ahli Mamzer Hall at 7 p.m. But also, before that, you have on the 4th of October, uh, the handball uh, Emirates Cup will start. It will be Al Ain versus Shabab Al Ahli at Al Ain Hall. Uh, make sure, guys, to tune in to our Smashy TV and subscribe to watch all the games. Nice. How are you, Cairo? I was looking forward to watching the new season start. I was so looking forward to it. I was like, yeah, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sunday, I don't really do anything. I'll stay at home. So any games that's playing, I was looking forward to it. But can't wait for, for, the, for the tournament to start. And, be, you know, my favorite team starting it off as well, so. Shabab al Ahli, huh? Yeah, come on. You know how it goes. You know. But I, like I said, this, this season, I'm just hoping, like, I can find new excitement in the new players. Mm -hmm. And we can just enjoy ourselves, like, see what players are exciting this season and just grow some new favorites. Yeah, I think this season will be, like, the competition will be much higher than last season mm. because you also had a Nos start stepping in with Shabab al Ahli. Uh, so I think it's going to be a very, very competitive season, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I also heard, like, they, they're getting a lot more uh, international players in as well, mm -hmm. which is great. I think, yeah. I think yeah. that will help, you know, strengthen the team. But I heard they're getting a lot more international players in, so just, I think it's just be exciting overall, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. But what's the, what, what have we got going on? Uh, as I told you in the intro, like, very hectic uh, weekend for the Saudi League. It started off with Al Hilal winning 3-0. Uh, against uh, uh, Red SC, uh, you have Mitrovic again scoring two goals. This player is, is amazing. It, like literally, like let's agree or disagree together. But Al Hilal is somewhere else, in, in, in like not only in, like in Saudi league, but across like the Middle East. This team is crazy. What makes you say that though? What's making them? The way they play is just that. Their team. Mm. If someone drops out, like that, like Neymar, you know, he's like he's injured for like more than like eight months. Yeah, yeah. And they're doing all of that without him. They started off the season against uh, Al Nasr and they won them. So this team, like in the next three four years, they'll be like on the on the top form. And then you had um, Karim Benzema scores his first hat trick. Uh, nice. Very big seven one against Al Wahda Mecca. To be honest, as I just told you, Al-Hilal is a very strong team, but the only team can stop Al-Hilal is Al-Tahad, not Al-Nasr. Respect to Ronaldo <laughs> and his team. I know you, Ronaldo, started all of that. But if you look at the Al-Tahad team, they've got Benzema, okay? Fabinho from Liverpool. They've got Kante. The amount of players that they start getting are very quality players. And they also just recently signed Daniel Pereira from Paris Saint-Germain. The team is getting very hard, you mm. know. The team is built more of a team. Obviously, they have Hamdallah. Uh, he was the striker, and he left to uh, Al-Shabaab. So, to be honest, is very happy for Benzema scoring a hat-trick. He scored the bang, the first one. He just shot it from outside the box. It was a crazy goal. Um, he started to have confidence. First season was him wasn't that good at all. They say they had the problem with the manager. He had the problem with with Hamdallah, the other other striker, but both of them are gone now, so it's just him. How is how is having these players affect like the rest of the team? How are they? How are the rest of the team performing? The the national players. Um, national 
of the, the Saudi international team? No, in, in, in team? that team. In, the, in that team itself? Yeah. Obviously, like, uh, if, for example, me playing in a, in a league and having big players that they compete in the top level because like, they play like Champions League, Premier League, uh, La Liga, you know? Seeing the way they train, seeing the way uh, they fight, their mentality, the way of working out is different, you mm. know? Because I mean, agree or disagree, like football outside in Europe, it's much more like better than you yeah, know yeah. the Middle East. But that isn't there anymore because things have been trying to go around. Yeah, equipments, recovery, training grounds, equipments. You know, like GPSs that cover how how many like how many minutes did you run for like kilometers. You know, they've got this thing right now. It's AI that I've been working on for three years. Actually, you, you would put the plan of your team and of the other team, okay? And based on the analytics that this program will get, it will tell you which formation to play with. Mm. During the game, it will tell you to substitute this player with this substitute. It will tell you the result of the game before even the game starts. Really? And we're people playing. Like, it's like simulating in FIFA. <laughs> do, you know, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, like, uh, football is very developing, especially in Saudi. Uh, it's a great opportunity for any 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 player who's playing against such big players. It's a learning opportunity for him. I think I think with all these, we, I think with the new transfers that's happening right now in uh, in the Saudi league, I think it's it's, it's crazy for me because it's like all these players that w a lot of the football fans watched over on on the western side, mm -hmm. them coming over to to the Middle wow. East to Saudi league is one. Obviously, Ronaldo brought so much eyes to Al Nasser, but Technically, it was just Al Nasser that was yeah. hyped up so much that that just became a brand because of Ronaldo. And mm -hmm. I think slowly now, with all these players coming in, I think it's just showing how strong the Saudi league can be, mm -hmm. how strong of a competition it can be. Mm -hmm. Three, also how desirable it is for these players to actually uh, accept that, you know, I actually want to move over to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like, come on, it's, I know sometimes it's about money and stuff like that, but also you know, a country like Saudi Arabia has never been on someone's bucket list to live in, yeah. to move in. Yeah. The fact that these sports are bringing these these athletes over here, I think it's like, it's amazing to see, like, it's not just about Ronaldo anymore. Yeah. You know, there's these other players, Benzema, mm -hmm. Neymar, uh, all these new players coming from the transfers. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, as time goes on, I think it's just going to bring a lot more exciting to the league. Mm -hmm. And the fact that a lot of more people are watching the highlights on, on like, the cuts that you see on YouTube yeah. and, and social media... It's just bringing a lot more of an excitement. I'll tell you one thing that I love about the the Saudi league is the Arab commentators. Yeah, they're you know crazy. they have so much energy, so Bahad much excitement. Yeah, like they. It's like they bring that culture. Yeah, like, like if the game is very boring, the commentator can we'll make it fun. Yeah. Uh, also, adding to what you're saying, after you had Ronaldo, Neymar, etc., players coming last season, they said that Khalas, it's just one season and it's gone, mm. right? Now you have Aubameyang moving uh, from Marsilia to Qadisiya, okay? You have Moussa Diaba from Aston Villa to Al Ittihad, mm -hmm. like, you know? Nacho Fernandez, he's a defender of Real Madrid for like more than 13 years, and he just won the Champions League with them last season. He moved to Saudi, you know what I mean? They got like Bento to Al Nasr, uh, Hussam, uh, Hussam Auer to Al Ittihad as well from Rome. Like, you see players coming from Rome, Fiorentina, Bonventure to Al Shabab. Uh, obviously, I said the Hamdallah uh, moved from Al Tahad to Shabab, but when you got players moving from Rome, moving from uh, Madrid, Real Madrid, moving from Aston Villa, move, moving from Marsilia, French League, like, they can also earn similar money there, mm. you know, but I think they see potential in, 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 in and the Saudi also, league. And like also they're not, they're not like, they're not strikers. These are like different variations yeah, different of positions, positions yeah. which also kind of like, is also kind of interesting to see because like, if the, you know, the fact that they buy in these different players from different positions must mean that within the team itself, other positions are strong enough that they're not looking at the strikers mm -hmm. or midfielders. Like the fact that they're getting defenders and things like that, they know where they're lacking, but they also know what player could, bring that uh mm -hmm. that what's the word um that synergy between all the other players coming in and make the other players stronger uh yeah i totally agree with you and before we move on from saudi uh there was a big uh match al nasr and al hilal al ahli sorry it, it finished 1-1 oh. and it was the debut 
uh, from the English star who just moved, Ivan uh, Tony. He moved from Brentford uh, the beginning of uh, this season. Um, around 40 million pounds, 53 million dollars. Uh, he made his debut and he got a lot of hate after the game because he didn't perform that well, mm. uh, especially as a striker. He was just playing at the Euros well, a month ago. Um, it would take time, I think. I think it would take time. It's not, like, it is, a, it is a culture shock. It is a change of teams. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's playing with a whole new a whole new team that may play differently than they do in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it would take time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But him playing for 90 minutes, only having one shot on target, touching the ball like five passes. Like, f for me, I didn't play professional top leagues. I played for like five years, but... <laughs> If I touch the ball only five times in the first half, I'll ask the coach to sub me, you know? Okay. So, I agree, like, it takes time to adapt, but when you get an international player yeah, yeah. from the Premier League, and he's an English player, you would expect more from him. I mean, I get it. I do get it. I think also just, like, you know, not everyone. Look at, look at some of the top players. They don't always have the best games, you know? People, the fans are going to be harsh because, you know, they want to see the team win, but I think... Just let him let him just settle down a little bit. All right, let's move on uh, from the Saudi league to a Saudi player. Then we continue to our stories. We had Fahd Al Mualid. Uh, the Dubai police uh, reported on X Twitter from Lila Al Mualid uh, fell off the balcony of his second floor. Uh, nothing is confirmed. Still under investigation. Uh, what's really going? Happen, what's really happening with the player right now. But what I, what I see from the statement that they published that the player is in a very bad situation. He's in the intensive care. Yep. Um, also, the Saudi consulate in Dubai also announced the same that already like they had like a, a communication call between the Dubai police and the hospital to check on the players and they're all aligned. But technically, the player now is stable. His health is stable, uh, but still under investigation. And Dubai police mentioned that we will share the news once we have like a results out of it. But it's it's very hard for me, like knowing what was that be reason of him like falling from a balcony. You know? I mean, it's a, I mean, it is, it is a sad, it is sad news, and accidents happens all the time, you know. And I think it's it's tough. I think I think he was a great player. He's a great player. Um, for his team and the national team as well. Yeah, fact. Uh, like back in 2010, the only player you would know in the Saudi team is Fahd Mualid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, the best we can do is you know pray that he recovers quickly, recovers well to full health, inshallah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's sad news, and you, you just never know. Like you said, the Dubai police hasn't said anything about the incident, so I think we just wait on. Uh, on also, that. people are trying to link that. Um, when the World Cup was happening uh, in 2022, um, he tested positive for anti-doping and he was suspended for 18 months. So you know how it's like when like, uh, especially football players and celebrities, but football players more, when they like get into like an accident, things just hype up around them. Because mm. like similar thing, we have like a back left of the Egyptian international team, he plays for Zamalek, he did a car accident and unfortunately one of the police officers, he, he hit him with the car, he passed away. That's not saying that they caught him with drugs. That means he smokes drugs. You know that people start adding things together. But yeah, as you say, I just we just wish him a safe recovery. Yeah, I'm sure like uh, like health here in Dubai will take good care of him, and hopefully we'll see him back. You know, in, in the pitch very soon. Um, let's move on to a chaos story that happened. Um, so basically, there was a game between Al Kuwait and Al Arak. Uh, in the qualification for the World Cup. Uh, it was in Jabir Al Ahmad International Stadium. It's a stadium that like takes up to 60,000 people. Uh, that game was chaos because a lot of fans had ticket, couldn't enter the stadium, they weren't allowed, and many others did not have tickets, they entered the stadium. So you had more than the capacity. So that led to like people fainted Okay, due to the temperature of 40 degree, mm. uh, a lot of reported, a lot of people reported what happened, and the board, the, the board, the board quit after that game. The board, the, like the federation board, quitted. Like there were six members, and they 
just quit it after this game. Uh, me just mentioning this statement um, is very important, okay? Because, you know, when you see an injured player in the field, right? Yeah. You would stop the game, right? If you see the referee, yeah, you yeah. would stop the game. But also, when you see a fan... Like, they say people were asking for water from how crowded it was. Yeah. You know? It's very hard for the fans. You hear a lot of fans pass in games due to how crowded and people start pushing. Um, I wish... I, I Like, they haven't reported anyone injured or passed away. Mm. Thank God that's something good. But in general, like, people would, like, need to take away more of the fans. And actually, if there's something wrong with the game, don't start the game. Yeah, you know, like if if a player's life costs that, a, a fan's player will even cost. You know, I think I think like the the positive thing is that knowing that the fans really want to watch the game. You know, yeah. even the capacity might be low. Maybe they just misjudge uh, how many people would actually want to watch the game. Yeah, but you're right. I think I think when it comes down to like health and safety, safety of the players, safety of the fans, safety of the whole team, I think better precautions should be taken, and. Um, it, it would have been an exciting game. I think. I think a game like that would have been exciting. I would like for players that didn't get the tickets. Capacity sixty thousand is really small for for a game mm, like yeah. that. You know. So, I think just better measurement should have been should have been taken. Yeah, but I, I, obviously everybody wants. But if 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 you would want everyone to watch the game, you have millions inside the stadium. Mm. You know. But if you don't have a ticket, you might go there yeah, try to get a black market ticket. Yeah. Okay, we get that. But not allowing people that have tickets. Because you already know that it's already packed, and like the main problem came from you that you allow people who doesn't have ticket, and yeah. now you're not al- allowing people that have the ticket. You know, like we see a lot of things happen like that, like similar to the Champions League final in in in, in France. Same thing. So it always think, happens. I, and I guess it comes down to like uh, advancement in technology. I think I think there are solutions out there to make things like this be much easier. Uh, technology out there is so much easier now. You know, scan and, and enter kind of system is great for for stadiums of big capacities, things like that. But again, like I said, I think the positive thing is is knowing that they had fans that really wanted to watch the match. I think that that just shows like where football is in general in the national uh, in terms of national team, where the football is like internationally for the country teams. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate that all of this happened, and I hope like there wasn't any casualties. Yeah. That we can think. Moving over to the UAE, Arabian Gulf League. Um, we have the games kicking off for the third round on the 20th. You have Banyas versus Ajman mm-hmm. and Dibal Husn versus Al Bataya. Also, a very good game, Al Charger versus Al Jazeera. And unfortunately, Etihad Kalba versus Al Ain has been postponed. And you have a derby between Al Wasl versus Al Nasr. Uh, very very exciting games happening before the AFC Championship. Um, how how are you how are you looking forward for the for, for the league? How are you looking for the derby between like Al Wasl and Al Nasr, Sharjah and like Al Jazeera? Because like these these clubs like especially Al Wasl and Nasr, it's like it's like five minutes away from both of them. You yeah know? yeah, it's gonna be like a Man City versus Man United situation. S- yeah something similar. Yeah, I think I don't know. This is gonna be my first time watching a full league here in in, in the UAE, so I'm excited just to see uh, like what team. I, I don't know what team I support yet, but. This season, I reckon. Ask me at the end of the season, I'll tell you which team I support. Shabab Al Ali as well. Maybe, maybe. Let's <laughs> Do you want to sign with Shabab Al Ali? Just let me know. Listen, I'm telling you. You know, like like I said, basketball. I love the players. You know, there's different players in different teams. I love. I think with football, it has to be some sort of connection. The best team uh, based on last season is Al Ain so far, because actually in the champ in the Asian Champions League last season they knocked out Al Nasr mm-hmm. and Al Hilal in the final. So Al Ain. Yeah, I like. Listen, if I'm glory hunting, I'm for, I'll, I'll, I'll be Alain. See, I have it behind you. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you have top of the league after the first two games. You have Al Nasr with six points, Sharjah with six points, Shabab Al Ahli with six points, and Al Wahda on a fourth place with six points, and Al Ain and Al Wasl with four points on a fifth and sixth place. Obviously, the league still is going to hype up. Um, yeah, so th- that's it. But. What people are very excited for uh, that the AFC Champions uh, Champions League title are gonna start to kick off, and the Lain will have their first game against Al Sadd. Uh, Al Sadd Al Qatari is like, you know, the giant of Qatar. They had Chavi uh, playing there for a while. They like playing, then coaching. They got really good players. They're a very good team. Obviously, Lain is the title holders. They would wanna like fight for it to get it again. I hope it's not that hard. They've got this player, Sofiane. He's a very good marker. He's a very good player. 
Um, but unfortunately, Ronaldo will miss the first match um, against Ol Shorta as he has um, viral infection. Mm. Um, still, like according to the to, to the club statement, that Ronaldo felt ill, and after he's been like assisted with the medical staff, uh, he said that he's diagnosed with with inf in, in infection. Um, I wish him a very speed recovery, as Ronaldo loves any tournament that's related to the Champions League. So it's even Europa Champions League, Asia Champions League, African Champions League. He he just loves the Champions League so much. Um, good games kicking, good kick, uh, good game kickings ahead. You got Al Wasl uh, will play also. Well, I mean Ahli also having a game. So obviously we'll give you uh, all the updates on those games. Also, you can find the results uh, with us yeah. on a Friday. Yeah, I think with I think with Ronaldo, mm -hmm. I think um, this is like a a unique opportunity to see how the team, what the team has learned from him, mm -hmm. his his leadership his skill sets, like how, what the team has learned for him with his absence now, mm -hmm. how they can push forward. Well, I think in Nasr, they also have a good team. I, I think they're the third strongest team. I think Al Halal is the first. And also their manager they have is very good. And then Al Ittihad and then Al Nasr. They have like uh, Taliska, Brozovic. Uh, they got Sadio Mani, Sengali, an ex-Liverpool uh, player, Alex Telles, but he just, oh yeah, he, 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 he went back to Europe. Probably, yeah. Uh, no, so they've got like a very good players. They also that Saudi attacking player uh, Abdul Rahman Gharib. He's a very good guy. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a very like skillful guy with the ball. So yeah, yeah. I think they're they're, they're a good team. Uh, hopefully, um, they make it out. And I think I think I think we'll see Al Nasr, Al Hilal, Al Ain. You know, Assad playing like semi-finals against each other on that mm -hmm. tournament. I believe it's going to be a very, very big tournament this year, especially with the teams bringing more players. No, I'm excited. I'm excited. Like I said, this is my first. Uh, this is going to be my first season that I watched of like the Middle Eastern Football League. So I'm excited. I'm excited by the end of the season. Pick my favorite team. See who I like the best. I know you still go for Shabab Alani. <laughs> 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 but you know what? Like even talking about basketball, like even though I like Shabab Alani. Um, I think it's Al Wasl that has the, the there's another family there, like five brothers I think. I yeah. think it's Al Wasl, mm -hmm. and um, it's one of the the youngest one, the youngest brother in that team. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. So like I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm I'm watching the players in terms of football. I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna be. I'll give you my weekly update on like how I'm enjoying the the games and how I'm mm -hmm. enjoying the league. Um, but yeah, so far today's the first match, right? With uh, Al Nasr playing tonight. Uh, oh, on the twentieth. On the twentieth. Yeah. So that'll be my first game that I watch, and then we're just gonna just enjoy ourselves. And we'll also try to go do their live coverages from mm -hmm. Smashy Sports uh, Instagram. Uh, thank you, Karu. Thank you for today's episode. Thank you, Hisham. Uh, thank you for everyone listening. Please uh, follow and subscribe our podcast to get the latest episodes notification on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Remy and Spotify. Don't forget to engage with us. You know, hit us up in the DMs, ask us questions, um, comment on on anything you see on our, on Smashy Sports because we would love to kind of be more involved with the community, with the culture. So yeah, engage with us. Hisham's always going to be here. I'm going to be here. And if you want to watch the full. Uh, video episode it's on smashy tv under smashy sport um want to thank our producers massa and kirby uh, see you in the next episode this was another episode of smashy sport podcast on the augustus media network podcast <laughs>